Oh, what's up, people? Dobbs Wars is right here, and welcome to Game Jams. Another episode, another day to look through my treasures of choice. Now, we went through a lot of different consoles now, but there's one thing that we have been neglecting within all these video game consoles the handhelds. So, this month is all based off and paying homage to the handhelds. And the first one we're going to start off with was one of the most well known and well sold consoles for handhelds of all time the Game Boy the Game Boy was actually one of the longest spanning handheld consoles to ever survive for many many years it lasted all the way up till GameCube until they stopped making games for it that's insane and I remember I think Game Boy came out around about 1989 or something like that and if I remember I think GameCube came out around about 2006 that's a long, long time for making a crap ton of games. Now, as you guys know, Game Boy games are quite hard to come by nowadays because mainly some of them have been thrown away, they've been destroyed, or they've been chipped. However, I went for my personal collection and I found my five choices of my personal gems. Now, you may be thinking these are not gems to you because you might have seen them all the time, but for me, they're quite hard for me to come by and I enjoy them a lot. And they're not very common in the United Kingdom. So without further ado, they're not in order, except for the main one, but let's get this started. The first one I'm going to talk about for definitely a gem is Batman and the, the Animated Series. This is quite hard for the United Kingdom because the Animated Series was massively praised upon, but there was not a lot of games for it. Only the ones I only know is this one and on the SNES, and the SNES one is very expensive and quite rare. But this one is quite up there for me to be an absolute gem. It's just like the N6, the N, the SNES one, but as you guys know, as Game Boy version. Now, as, as you may think, in, oh my god, these graphics look terrible nowadays. But these graphics back in the day were amazing. And I don't care about the graphics, as you guys know. I mainly care about the controls and how well the game plays. It was a super smooth game. I enjoyed it massively. As you guys know, it is pretty much based off the animated series, so you got yourself the Joker, you got Scarecrow, you got Two-Face, you get Catwoman, Batman and Robin. But by God, people, it was absolutely fantastic for a handheld game. I, when I first purchased this a long time ago, I thought it was going to be awful. Not like the SNES version, but when I actually played it, it actually quite as well held up to what it was supposed to be. So that's why I class... Batman the Animated Series on the Game Boy, a gem in my eyes. Next up was well, actually, to be honest, the first ever Game Boy game I ever played in my life. Yeah, you might be thinking that Mario was the first game I ever played, or actually no, Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow would have been my first game. Nah, it was actually a very difficult game, and it was a dungeon crawling art JRPG, and that is Azure Dreams. I'll show you a picture if you guys can't see it. Azure Dreams was freaking hard when I was a kid. I still don't understand it fully well. Actually, no, I should do understand it now because I played a load, of, a load of dungeon crawlers. And to tell you truly, people, I don't see this ever anymore. I rarely do. This is the only copy I've ever seen in the past, say, 15 years. And to be honest, I do wish I still had the box because the box is going for stupid money. But either way, I still have my original copy. What it pretty much is, is like any of the other dungeon crawlers. If you played um, Pokemon Mystery Dungeons or any of them type of games, you played this game. But, however, working around it has the same mechanics as well as, excuse me, <laughs> excuse me, has the same mechanics as your Final Fantasies, a JRPG, Tactics. You have to make sure you level up your characters before you keep moving through the dungeon. Because each area that you go to is a different level. You can easily start from level 1 and, go and move straight to a level 10 dungeon and you get absolutely wrecked. But you have to find the specific dungeons that you need to be in. But of course the game will tell you where you need to go. When I was a kid, I was stupid. I didn't listen, to, I didn't read the single word. I just went to the highest level of difficulty and I got my ass whooped. I do wish I ever had a chance, if I, whenever I have a chance, I'll definitely try and get myself a go on this game again on my own and see if I can get any further with it because really, I never really got far with it because I was absolutely god awful, but I still love the game. 
Next up is a game that everybody knows. Not a lot of people talk a lot about on the Game Boy, but all the time on the NES and the SNES and other consoles. And that is Metroid. And this is Metroid 2 Return of Samus. Never really heard of Samus 2, to be honest. I think Samus 2 only came out on the game, and I think it got um, misplaced by a lot, a lot of fans because they preferred it to be on the NES. And of course, this was highly panned by a lot, a lot of fans because it was a Game Boy game, it wasn't NES, it wasn't on the big screen, it was a handheld, so it would have been bad. I don't think so, it actually did help hold up for what it was, and of course it was a Game Boy game, of course they have a bit of clunkiness, but there's massive superior Game Boy games out there that held up its lifespan for many years. <laughs> Which of course is like Pokemon and Legend of Zelda and Castlevania and all them type of good games. As well as the Mario's, the Mario's held up dramatically and made massive franchises. But Metroid! It's been a slow franchise, but this game on the Game Boy is actually a very, very complex game. Even though it's very small and you have to look at it in a little small screen, unless you, of course, you use yourself the SNES, the Super Game Boy on the SNES, or the, uh, the Game Boy adapter on the GameCube. But this, to be honest, took me a long, long time to finish. It really did. They did make sure that this game was long for what it was worth because Metroid is a long game because it's a massive map to go from point A to point B to point C, point D. And if you go, if you miss a spot, you have to go back and get it all done and dusted. So yeah, the game is hard. Just to get the truth, Metroid games are quite hard for me. Like I said, I'm not, I'm a, I'm a born gamer, but of course I have my own difficulty choice. And I can definitely say Metroid games are quite hard for me because I'm not really good at them. But I do love Metroid 2, Return of Samus on the Game Boy. It's a lot of fun, definitely a gem in my eyes. I'd encourage you guys to try and pick this game up. Unless, like I said, if you have an emulator, play the emulator. Now let's get into the big two ones. Now the next one I'm going to go for, once again, it's not boxed, but I always have it in a special case. Because it's very treasured for me. And that is, of course, Legend of Zelda... Link's Awakening. Yes, the one bef the one that got remastered on the Switch. Now, everybody's played this now. I'm sure they have because they played it on the Switch. But when the Switch was never made and we only had this, this was interesting. Because a lot of people thought to myself, is this a sequel? Is it a prequel to any of the Legend of Zeldas? We couldn't really say for sure because the timeline of Legend of Zelda was so scarce and so many different timelines and different type of metaverses if you guys want to call it. But I can tell you truthfully though, it was an interesting game. It had the same little mechanics as Legend of Zelda 1, as we all know from the NES, but only based off one small island. And it had this like, it had like the same feeling as Legend of Zelda on the SNES, which was, if I remember, a link to the past, if I recall, I think. I think it was, I try to remember. But it had the same mechanics as the original um, Legend, of Legend of Zelda. So put them two together, you got this game. And as you guys know, a lot of people would say that this is the worst one, the Switch one is better because it's better graphics. But I'm talking about Game Boy stuff here, not the Switch. This is ace. It really is. It definitely holds up for what it is right now. If you want the better graphics, of course you'll play the Switch game, but if you don't care about it and you want to play some old school stuff, you play the Game Boy version. It's awesome. It's solid. Same difficulty as the remake. I enjoy it. Give, definitely give it a go. But now time for the main one. It's boxed. I hunt this down for a while now, people. And thanks to the people from Saw Fun, they got it in, and I purchased it. And that is... The Castlevania Adventure. This game is difficult. Now you may be thinking, Dobbsy, what is Castlevania Adventure? Pretty much, it's after Castlevania 1, if I recall. Or it's just pretty much Castlevania 1 as a Game Boy version. I highly doubt it. I, don't, I disagree with it. What I see on the back of the blur from reading it, for what they people, because everybody says this game is not based off any of the games. 
What I see on the back of the blur on what the actual Konami creators have said about this game is after, the, after his wings clipped in Castlevania and Simon's Quest 1 and 2, the death-defying count has risen again. So it is a sequel, ladies and gentlemen. Now that is pretty much set in stone, because not a lot of people have the box, so it's hard to say whether it's a sequel or not. It is a sequel to Castlevania 1 and 2. Not 3 yet. So it will have the same soundtrack as both Castlevania 1 and 2, mainly Castlevania 2, um, Sam, um, Simon's Quest, of course, Very Bloody Tears, which definitely does rock. And this is not an 8 bit, it's in Game Boy bit, but it's still enjoyable. And to tell you the truth, with people, I think it's actually way harder than 1 and 2, dramatically, because of course, yes, the controls can be a little bit clunky for what it can be, but for a Castlevania collector and a massive Castlevania fan, this is a gem box. I mean, I'm seriously, you try and get a box version of this, you're paying stupid money. But, all I can say is people, if you could try and get yourself a hands on this, definitely give it a whirl, definitely play it, enjoy it for what it is, don't say it's worse because it has awful graphics, forget about the graphics people, if you're a gamer, you don't care about graphics, you care about how the game is played, and how the story is built, and how it is controlled, not by graphics, not by visuals. So, that's pretty much all I've got time for today people, for the Game Boy stuff. As you guys know, Castlevania Adventure, Legend of Zelda's Link Awakening, Metroid 2, Azure Dreams, and Batman's The Animated Series. Five amazing games on the Game Boy. Now, as you guys might be thinking, Dobsy, is there any other great gems on the Game Boy? There surely is. However, my collection of Game Boy stuff is very, very slim because they're hard to come by. Of course there is the Pokemon games, but I won't count them because they're not classed as gems. Everybody's got them and everybody knows that they're great, so there's no point for me to really talk about them. So if you guys enjoyed it, I want to ask you guys the personal question for your own Game Boy collection, whether you own them or you have them as emulators, what are your gems for the Game Boy? Not the Game Boy Color, not the Game Boy Advance, the original Game Boy. So, please leave it in the comments down below. I love reading them. I always give you guys a like if I agree or disagree with them. I give you hearts when you do deserve them. And like I said, if I find something that really is a good, good comment, I'll definitely pin, you, pin it. Either way, people, make sure you like, subscribe, comment down below. And I'll see you guys next time for another episode of Game Gems. The people absolutely go to you guys for subscribing. And I'll see you guys next time. Cheerio!